And welcome to Trinity Anglican Church on this beautiful Sunday, sunny morning. Open our hearts, O Lord, to give heed to what is said by your Son. Our opening hymn this morning is found in the large blue book, 380, verses 1, 3, 5, and 6, O Worship the King.
Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds to all the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who still labor for the Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually to teach his faith. Remember the marvelous marvels he has done. His wonders and his judgments. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. We're on 37. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one stone. Egypt was glad of their going. Because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering. And the fire to the light in the night season. They asked and quails appeared. And he satisfied them. He opened the rock and the water flowed. So the river ran in dry places. For God remembered his holy word. And Abraham his servant. So 
So he led forth his people with gladness. He gave his people the lands of the nations, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. God of our salvation, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have fulfilled your promise to our ancestors in the faith to redeem the world from slavery and to lead us into the promised land. Grant us living water from the rock and bread from heaven, that we may survive our desert pilgrimage and praise you forever through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Please remain seated as we listen to the Word of God. The second reading is a letter of St. Paul to the Phoenicians, chapter 1, beginning in verse 21. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor to me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ. Well, that is far better. But to remain to in the flesh is more necessary for you since I am considered good, since I am convinced of this. I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only have your life, only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. I am no way intimidated by your opponents, for then this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only to believe in Christ, but to suffer, suffer for him as well, since you have, since you are having the same struggle that I saw and that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God. Our gradual hymn is 503, singing verses 1 and 2 before the gospel. Fight the good fight with all thy might. beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, 
he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. He said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Let the words of my mouth and meditation of all our hearts be totally acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I'll leave the scripture readings and the gospel for you to discern later in the day. What I'm going to talk about here this morning is where I spent Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this past week. One of the highlights for me, and I'm speaking for myself, I, don't, I expect for the others that attended, is the annual clergy conference where we get an opportunity to spend Monday afternoon and evening, Tuesday and Tuesday evening, and Wednesday afternoon with our bishop. It's an annual event, and it usually has upwards of 50 to 70 of our clergy from across this whole diocese attending. So quite often, it's the only time we're going to see some of them in the far reaches of our diocese, and the only time they get to see us. On Tuesday of last week, Archbishop David Edwards celebrated his ninth anniversary as our bishop. Time goes on, so he's in his tenth year now. The structure of clergy conference it starts about 2, 2, 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon with registration. And for the people that live away, they're getting checked into the rooms at the Madonna, Villa Madonna. And then we end up into a workshop. We have evening prayer. We have more of the workshop. We have meals together. We start on Tuesday in prayer, in service. We have meals. We do sessions, usually by experts in the topics of the church. And we finish well into the evening on Tuesday with evening prayer and compline. And then we gather again on Wednesday and we do a bit of a wrap up of what the sessions were all about and what the take homes are. And then we conclude with a Eucharist offered to us through our bishop and then have a final meal together before departing. That's basically the model of it. The content changes year to year based on what's going on. As I said, normally we have a, a session leader who is an expert in one topic or another of the church. This year we were treated because our expert was our own archbishop. And he presented a paper to the Synod back in June. And that's what he focused his sessions on. And I will highlight some of that as we go forward. There's multiple pages here, so don't get worried. I'm not going line by line. But I have a copy if you want to take it home and peruse it over a cup of coffee. Archbishop David shared with Synod and shared with us his five priorities. And he's concerned. There's no, no question. He went off script many times. First priority, discipleship and formation. Second, the shape of ministry. Third, the new styles of ministry. Fourth, sharing of resources. And fifth, the cathedral, the building itself. So I'll just highlight a few items in each of those priorities. And what the Archbishop was asking us is, and there was 55 of us gathered there, are our priorities in line with his? If they aren't, he needs to get modified a bit because it's no sense pushing on a rope if everybody is not lined up. Discipleship and formation. Well, discipleship, what do you understand that term to mean? Myself, I struggle with it. And I thought David gave a perfect example about what discipleship's really about. He and Debbie, as David said, I did the 
worst mistake in my whole life. I went and bought a puppy. Debbie doesn't get to travel with him anymore because she's got to babysit the puppy. So if you're looking for Debbie, when David comes here, that's where she's at. It's a three month old now. But discipleship, he, said, he described it, he says, we're, we're, we're training this puppy and we're walking down the road and the puppy wants to chase anything that's got four wheels. And it's not going to end well for the puppy. We all know that story. So 10 out of 10 cars go by, puppy wants to chase. It's three months old now. Three out of 10, it doesn't want to chase now. It's training, it's walking alongside of someone and sharing our life, our values, as David and Debbie are sharing with their puppy to say this, this is the way that we need to walk through life to be healthy. I thought it was a good example because it's something you keep in your mind when you see discipleship. Because that's what it's all about. It's us walking alongside of others, sharing our Christian life. And they should see it without us preaching with the Bible in the hand that we are indeed Christians. I think back to many of my bosses I had in industry in St. John and elsewhere. And I can think back and I said, that was truly a Christian boss. Are we willing to be disciples? Are we willing to openly walk alongside someone and share our faith? Or are we content by being Sunday disciples? The second item he had was the shape of ministry. And he says, what does ministry mean for us today? Where do each of us fit in the current roles of parish ministry? Well, he, and I, I know this because I'm, I get communications from the bishop's office at times. Over the past year, year and a half, in particular, they've been going out across the continent, looking at various ministry models and training models. And I know that our, arch, our archdeacon, Leo Martin, and Sean Branch were over in uh, England this summer looking at a training model there. They're talking to educators, they're talking to seminaries about what does the shape look like going forward. Do we have a good sense of that in our own diocese? Well, the reality is we have a number of parishes that are actually in a movement right now and their model is to share in leadership. Sussex, St. Mark's and Waterford, three, di three very distinct parishes with a single incumbent. Fredericton Junction and New Maryland are on a similar path. And Woodstock and Richmond are waiting for their priest to arrive. And the Upper River Valley has evolved into a missionary model. So there is a lot of change and we need to know what the shape of ministry is. And the bishop's asking of us, how do we go about encouraging each of us to engage in such conversations about the shape of our ministry going forward. Priority number three, new styles of ministry. He talked, you know, we talk about church planting. I got books and books in my, piled on my floor around my desk. I got no more shelves anymore. They're all full, but it talks about planting churches. We've been doing that and they've been writing books on it. And they've been going around doing lecture series on it for decades. It shouldn't be a foreign issue to us because we're here because our ancestors planted this church from their arrival in 1783. So it shouldn't be a foreign thing for us. The reality of our church today is the demographic between 30, age of 30 and age of 50 aren't here for the most part. 
God bless Mark and a few others that are with us. We do have some of that generation. <coughs> they were church. They were brought up in the church. Your kids were brought up in the church. But the church isn't speaking to them loud enough these days to make it a priority. So what styles of ministry do they need? How do we continue to serve them? How do we disciple them? The fact remains, what we're offering today, they're not buying. And some parishes are delving into this more and more by actually outreaching to the communities that these people are in. The diocese just funded a half-time position in Fredericton to work with the University of New Brunswick at St. Thomas with kids that are going on into university and there's some successes going on there right now. Priority number four, sharing resources. And that's not a new phenomenon either. You can go back and read the history of this church who involved a lot of different speakers and different people to lead worship over the centuries. I've read a lot of the history. We share a common treasure, the stone that Debbie Hughes, God bless her, because I don't, no one else has wanted the position. Parishes are sharing lay leadership. Everybody doesn't have to do a Bible study. One can do a Bible study and the other parishes join in. An Advent series, doesn't matter. We gotta get used to going past our wall into somebody else's building for the betterment of our own life. Sharing resources means we go beyond our walls. His final one was the cathedral. Well, I don't know how many, some people here know because I've talked about it a little bit in small circles. You think this building is in trouble, or it was in trouble. The cathedral is facing well over $10 million worth of repairs for it to stand for the next generation. And the question, I can tell you, there was 50, there's 50 clergy sitting there basically in the uh, congregation, in the session, and I can tell you there was as many mixed opinions about the cathedral as there was the number of people sitting there. The reality is no different than this church. Does this church make a difference to the community? The fact that it stands tall and proud on this peninsula, if it weren't here, does it make a difference? That's the fundamental question the cathedral needs to ask the diocese, and the diocese was giving them feedback, is some have a very distinct opinion on how the cathedral influences their ministries in their parishes, and some not so sure. So we concluded the sessions on Wednesday morning with basically each archdeaconry in their own group talking about these priorities. And there was no question that everyone there was behind one, two, three, and four. The cathedral was a mixed bag. And it'll sort itself out over time. I'm not going to read all the thoughts that are there. They're in the paper. You can take it home with you. But one sure thing is if we're going to thrive in this community, we got to know our neighbors. We got to know those at Calvary Temple. We got to know those at Stone. We got to know those that minister St. Andrew, St. David across the street. We got to figure out ways to do things together and not try everybody to do the same thing on our own individual basis. We are fortunate, and I can tell you from a new member's point of view in the last year and a little bit, there's 25 people that have called Trinity their home. 
That's huge. So this is not a doomsday thing at all. But we need to be no different than how we manage this building. I got a binder that's got 48 projects. About 21 of them are done. As big as, as, big as the steeple and as small as, as doing a little bit of lighting or something. We've got a plan. We've had a plan for seven and a half years and we're working on it for the next three years. The diocese needs the same plan. What is ministry going to look like? My first clergy conference in 2016 that I sat in with the bishop, first time ever, and Friday night, or the first night, Monday night, I forgot to tell you, it's kind of open mic night if you want, but the bishop asked him anything and he'll answer the best he can. And someone asked him a question back in 2016, if the diocese will be here in X number of years, I forget what the length of time was, it was 25 years or something like that. And he said, you know, he said, you, you asked me a very easy question. Absolutely the diocese will be here in 25 years. What it will look like in 25 years, I don't have a clue. But that's all about us reacting and how we go forward and shape our ministry. So do take a copy. I'll, they're up here now. I didn't want you reading them while I was uh, preaching. So uh, I'll bring them down after the end of the service. But do take a copy home and anybody else that's not here. But it's worthy to understand because we're going to be following in line as a parish with our bishop's priorities. That's what we do. Amen. Your prayers of the people will be found on page 117 for the prayers for mourning. to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Those who ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace, the Lord, Lord have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us and love others as he has loved us. The Lord, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. The Lord, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to renew the church, to renew the church through the power of his life-giving spirit. Lord, have mercy. Um, returning to page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in his mercy, and he welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Change is how you feel comfortable. <laughs> Our offertory hymn is 435, verse 1, 4, and 5. Take my life and let it be consecrated.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thine is the kingdom, the 
power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And turning the page to 212, using the fraction sentence number three. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the end of the earth into your kingdom. This is the Lord's table, and you're all invited to share in the Lord's meal. The gifts of God to the people of God. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
standing seated as we sing the praise song number 63, you should spread. The choir will sing as you can join in on the refrain. Closing hymn is 388, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. 